press on that like button. Sure, sir, please talk to us. You have eight minutes. All right. Um, good evening, um, Elvis, and good evening to the listeners and the panelists. Um, I've just come on to probably clarify a few things if, you know, if people would agree with me um, yet to be seen. Um, so with regards to a few submissions that have been made and a few comments that have been made, you know, um, it's looking like, you know, the Yorubas are taking the fall for Tinubu's uh, criminal is getting up to, which, you know, I don't think it's fair on the descent and Omoluabi Yorubas, as we call ourselves. Um, you know, Tinubu has done what is done. And you, I mean, there, there are a lot of Yoruba people speaking up against it. But when I say, you know, people say, oh, the Yoruba people are the ones defending him. You see a lot of Yoruba people defending him. Yes, that might be true that you're seeing, you know, quite a lot of Yoruba people defending him. But at the same time, we should not ignore the fact that people like, you know, uh, Padi Banjo is speaking up. The Afeni Ferry actually backed Peter Obi. Uh, but the judge, you know, you can say for political reasons, but you know, we'll speak up against um, Tinubu. Uh, you have people like Shekun Shomomi that, you know, CM would often uh, fondly refer to. Uh, you've got people like uh, Daily Farutimi, who we all love to listen to. Um, even on our eyes, on their panel, um, it's a, you know, group of three people. And when um, or Oji joins them, mix four. But out of the three, you know, regulars, uh, two are, uh, oh, three of them are Yoruba people. And, you know, if I stand for what if I stands for, it needs no introduction. You've got um, Ayo, who, you know, most of the time is on the right on the right side. Um, Abati is, I've, I've described Abati here many times, is a lawyer, is a politician, then is a part-time journalist. So Abati, we know what he stands for, but out of the three, you can say two are standing for the right thing. So I, I'm just saying that people should, you know, be cautious. I'm not saying don't speak your mind, but don't lump every Yoruba person because, you know, people are quick to say, oh, you can see the Yoruba people coming on TV to defend Tinubu, but when you want to talk about the other guys, you individualize them and say, oh, Rufai said this. Oh, Ayo said this. Oh, Padi Banjo said this. So when you're saying that maybe we should amplify it to say, you know, the Yorubas are speaking up against them. I'm saying that so that we don't alienate the Yoruba people who are in support of Peter Obi, those who are not firmly rooted. Someone like me, it doesn't matter what anybody says, it's not going to change my mind. You know, I support Peter Obi. That's what I'm going to support as long as it runs for any election. But those who are not firmly rooted might just think, oh, you know, the people who are even trying to support all of a sudden, any little thing, uh, Yoruba people, Yoruba people. Of course, you get them supporting to Nubu. You can't, it's, 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 it's bound to happen. So that's, you know, that's one thing I would like to say. And if you look at some of the other people that have come to defend Tinubu, Asari Dukubo carried people from Niger Delta, chartered buses to Abuja. It's not Yoruba man. The lady who spoke yesterday, I saw someone said she was paid. Uh, the lady, the Igbo lady who came out yesterday talking all, all sort of rubbish. I didn't even listen to what she was saying because from when I had the headline, I was like, I haven't got time for this. She's an Igbo woman. Someone said she was paid. Okay, fine. But she's still an Igbo woman defending Tinubu. You understand? So you see, before the election, when people were saying, even it looked like Boris body language wasn't supporting Tinubu. But you saw the northern governors. They were the ones who went to court, took Boris to court, the Naira policy design, all in defense of Tinubu. Those were northerners. So what I'm saying is they are criminals in every part of Nigeria and they don't speak tribe. They unite and they commit their crime in unity. So let's be careful when we start labeling the rest of us who are Yoruba people with this. Is Yoruba people, these Yoruba people that. That is that. Um, I'll move on quickly to the uh, uh, the tilting of, you know, the favoritism, uh, nepotism. Um, it's it's quite sad to see. I agree that you know the southwest has been heavily favored. The juicy positions have gone to the southwest. Um, I agree. It's bad to see. It's not good. Um, but Buhari set this precedent. You know, set this precedent. And when it started, I was complaining bitterly, like, "What's this man doing?" And it's the same way I'm complaining that Inubu is doing the same thing. You know, that's not the way we want to develop our country and say we're you know we're united people. You get there and you give the juiciest positions to your people. It's it's just wrong. But Buhari started this madness. And the unfortunate thing for the Southwest people is, my people is, when Buhari was doing it, the Southwest APC especially kept quiet because they were waiting for their turn. Now that Tinubu has started it, if you're familiar with Twitter, the Ariwa Twitter have been complaining that, oh, this is nepotism. How can Tinubu be doing that? And I'm thinking, but Buhari, did, did you guys keep quiet? So the Yorubas, you know, who support APC were expecting the Northerners to reciprocate the favor by keeping quiet. It's our turn. I mean, look, let's, you know, let's give it to ourselves. But the Ariwas are not having it. They're complaining about this nepotism. God help them. It's an internal fight. Um, we won't get involved as much. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the BBC thing. 
I'm not sure. I, I think one of the things they accuse us of is we don't read, we don't check things. Let's check a few things. It would help, uh, especially for those who have Twitter. I've had so many people speak about BBC Africa. Number one, I blocked BBC Africa on Twitter. Um, Twitter is the only social media I use. I don't even know what Instagram or Facebook looks like. I've not been there like Facebook, like maybe 15 years. But Twitter, I'm there every day. Now, I blocked BBC Africa because I don't like what it prints most of the time. So this news came to me through BBC World yesterday. I didn't even know BBC Africa tweeted anything about it until I saw people talking about it. So BBC World tweeted it, and it wasn't a retweet of BBC Africa. BBC World themselves tweeted it yesterday. This is the account that has 40 million followers. Now, I went to check BBC Africa after I listened to a few people speak tonight to even see. Like I said, I blocked them, but I went to check. They've got about 4 million, just under 4 million followers. And their website is bbcafrica.com. If you click on the link to read this Tinobu story, it is on bbc.com. Not even BBC. Even if you go to the BBC Africa Twitter handle and you look at that tweet, the news is embedded in bbc.com, not bbcafrica.com. So we can't excuse it. Even if it was BBC Africa, they are not independent. But to make it worse, BBC World, the one that exactly. was created in 2006. Sorry? I said exactly. That's exactly, exactly. my so sentiment. So BBC World okay. tweeted it, and they didn't retweet BBC Africa. So we can't excuse them. They know what they are doing. So they are complicit. Like I said, even if it was BBC Africa, you still cannot excuse BBC World because BBC Africa is so independent. They've got only 4 million followers. BBC World has 40 million, 10 times more. So they tweeted it. Um, and if you look at BBC World, you know, you can put your location on Twitter. It's, it's optional. BBC World is London. That's their location. BBC Africa has no location. That's because probably they cover all of Africa. So there's no location, um, you know, on their handle. So BBC World cannot be excused, should not be excused. If people want to, you know, drag them, please drag them like whatever generator you want to liken them to. And the last thing I'm going to talk about before I drop is uh, Pastor Adeboye. I saw the video yesterday uh, while Elvis was on, actually. I saw it last night when the uh, video dropped. And I just thought, you know, he's a professor of math mathematics or maybe was a professor of mathematics. So he's a man that should be good with numbers. People are letting religion cloud their judgment. He's praying for Israel because in the Bible, Israel is talked about a lot. Now, I would like to know if Pastor Adeboye is aware that Israel has a population that 75% of Israelis or Israelites practice Judaism. They're not Christians. So they don't practice what it practices. They don't believe in what it believes in. 18% of Israelites are Muslims. Only 1.9% of Israelites are Christians. So I don't know why it's so bothered all in the name of religion, Christianity. There's only one point, right. under two percent of Israelites are, are Christians. So if he's going there, praying there, uh, I mean, if he's praying for them, thinking because we're all Christians, brotherhood, that's a big failure. There are more Muslims in Israel than Christians. So as a professor of mathematics, he should be familiar with numbers. So you know, there's much more to be spoken about in Nigeria, but if intentionally turn a blind eye to people who tell you religion pastors are not your problem go and face your politicians but these pastors are quick to stand up and you know pray for israel god help all of us thank you very much um elvis i i, I think it's cool thank you. that is i thought it's cool that yeah. is professor of mathematics thank you thank you um no no, no he said I, I, um uh, he was a professor of mathematics you need like it's cool I don't think he's Kumuyi. No, um, Adeboye is a professor of mathematics. Um, maybe Kumuyi is a professor, professor, professor as well. I don't know, but yeah. Adeboye is a professor of mathematics or was a professor. Okay. Um, both of them. Both of them are mathematicians. Both of them. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you uh, for your submission. I appreciate you all. <laughs>